Back in 2015, Toyota killed the original Venza, but in 2021, they're bringing it back. This time, it's gonna have a focus on luxury compared to the RAV4's focus on adventure and practicality. Does it hold up against the competition? Let's find out. But first, shout out to Coons Toyota of Westminster for giving us this car today. If you live in the DMV area and in need of a new Toyota, check out their website in the description below. Let's get into it. Looking at the front of the Venza, you do have the LED projector headlights which have auto high beams and are auto headlights. You also have your front camera right there, which we will get into a bit more with the tech stuff later. The other notable features are the blue on the badge to indicate that this is a hybrid vehicle. And you also have this weird looking front. There's like ridges under this thin layer of see-through plastic. I know Jake isn't a fan of it and I kind of have to agree with him. There's also fake vents on the side, which of course you know how we feel about fake vents. And lastly, this whole vehicle almost kind of comes to a point. Like the front grille section seems to be a bit more protruding than the back. It's not a bad look, but it's definitely an interesting look. Moving to the side of the Venza, you have the 19 inch alloy wheels. Moving up, you do have more hybrid badging to let people know you do drive a hybrid. Overall, the side of this vehicle is a very strong point of it, especially this rear half. This has a very unique and sleek look to it with the body lines really complementing the overall vehicle shape. Overall, the side of this vehicle is definitely a strong point. Looking at the mirror separately, they do have the body color, which on this particular model is a blizzard pearl. Um, these mirrors are power folding, so if you lock the car, they do fold. And also on the bottom of them, you do have a puddle light, which will turn on if it's darker out. Moving to the back of the Venza, you do have this very interesting shape with a slanted down rear window to come into an almost flat body line on top of your brake lights here. And the topic of brake lights, you do have a super long third brake light across the top of the window. Moving down, you have more hybrid badging with the blue on the Toyota logo, as well as a separate hybrid badge over here. To, um, to activate the rear power tailgate, you take your foot and kick it under the vehicle and it will raise. In the back, you have 28 cubic feet of storage space with these seats up, and if you put them down, that'll give you 55 cubic feet of storage space. Under the hood of the Venza, you'll find a 2.5 liter inline four engine with three electric motors producing 219 horsepower. One of those electric motors is connected to the rear axle, which means all wheel drive is standard in the Venza. You have a CVT transmission you get about 40 miles per gallon highway, 37 city for 39 total. All of this combined means you can drive for about 560 miles without having to get gas. Let's talk about the trims available for the Venza. They don't have an LE here, so we're gonna be doing this on our limited, but the main features for the LE are the hands-free power lift gate, a smart key system for the front door and the tailgate in 18 inch wheels. Moving on to the XLE, for $36,000, you get the smart key system for all the doors, as well as heated front seats and the eight-way power adjustable driver's seat. And finally, for $39,800, you get the Limited, which comes with the really cool bird's eye view camera, heated and ventilated front seats and steering wheel, and an available heads-up display. All Toyota Venzas come standard with Toyota Safety Set is gonna get you lane departure alert, steering assist with lane tracing assist, a radar cruise control, auto emergency braking, and a blind spot warning. Okay, time to get in the Venza. Here is your key. Uh, this vehicle does have the remote keyless entry. So you just put your hand right there and it will open up. The way you lock it, just slide your fingers right there and it will lock. So let's get back in. Sometimes it takes a tug or two. Getting in is nice and easy, nice and low profile. Again, the RAV4 is gonna be a bit higher. It's a bit more focused on that off-road feel than the Venza, which is more luxury focused. Put your foot on the brake, push the button, 
and you'll see wheel slides into place. So does your seat and everything comes to life. All those electronics in front of you. Really nice viewing out the front. The back, you have some pretty thick pillars back there and tiny windows. So it's gonna be a little hard to see, but thankfully you do have that blind spot system assisting you with that. Uh, overall, just a really nice experience from the driver's perspective here. And now you join me here on the interior of the Venza and it is a very nice place. As Colin mentioned, this is a more luxury focused vehicle. So the XLE and up is gonna get this nice wood trim towards the base of your center console. You're also just getting some really nice laid out design, nice metal accents, nice stitching right in front of you um, as a passenger. And you have this nice brown accenting everywhere, which I think works really well with this dark interior. Uh, it really does add a more luxurious touch. You have your JBL speakers even up here on your A pillar. I think it makes for a really, really nice look. The seats are nice and comfortable. You have these soft text uh, leather seats, which are heated and cooled in this limited trim. You have nice perforation, lots of brown stitching there. Really nice use of a color, good color palette right here. Overall, I really like the interior design of this vehicle. Let's look at it a bit more in depth. Let's take a look at your driver's area here in the Venza. First of all, very nice steering wheel. I wish they hollowed out this area, it would just make it look a little more premium, but I love those metal spokes. That's really a small, small nitpick. Uh, when a car is this good, those small things really uh, just stand out to you a bit more than in other vehicles. You have these really nice buttons right here. They have a nice tactile feel, and those are gonna control your seven inch screen right there. You also have different music controls, and then you have um, some voice activated features and some safety system features right there. So let's take a look real quick and see what's all going on in your center gauge cluster right here. Apologies for the glare. Let's see if I can get rid of that. So you can see you have your typical speedometer fare. You also have that meter to the top left that shows you if the vehicle is charging the battery, driving uh, in eco mode, so in some sort of hybrid form, or if you're using that gas engine for more power. And then in the center, you can see that nice seven inch display. It's really nicely molded in with the gauges. Really the only other company that does that good of a job or better, uh, that I can think of in the non-luxury space would be Jeep um, or Chrysler vehicles in general. So you can navigate with those buttons on the steering wheel. You can see you have your safety suite here. And actually there are some really nice animations right here, really nice and smooth. You have your energy monitor here so you can see we're charging the battery currently and some really smooth animations. You can see your tire pressure, all wheel drive systems um, and your safety suite. This is just a really, really nice useful screen. And then of course you have different settings here and any messages from the car. I think most people will probably keep it on you know, a fuel economy screen or some sort of driving support screen with the nice big speedometer there. I would like if they just had a plain screen where it showed the speedometer nice and big right there in the middle, but that's also a small nitpick. And you may not be able to see it because it is a very bright day. However, you have a heads up display right there. It looks fantastic. You can see your charge and power status along with your speed, what gear you're in and your compass. Really, really nice. Now let's take a look here at your infotainment screen. This vehicle does have the upgrade 12 inch infotainment screen upgrade from the uh, around eight inch that you're gonna get standard. So the really nice thing about the upgrade is that you can have your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto up at the same time as uh, some vehicle functions right here. So that is a really, really nice benefit. Apologies for the glare, by the way, folks, we're uh, making our best with the sunny day. But as you can see, you have all your vehicle functions in this little side menu. So I can switch between audio. Uh, this area right here is particularly interesting. You can see the energy monitor and see where the energy is in the vehicle. Now, let's say you wanted to customize this, you easily can do that and you can actually open this up and you'll see that you now have a larger menu, which can give you a little bit more information about what's going on with the car, but you can also switch that same menu to the other side. So now you see my functions that were previously right here are now on this side if I want maybe my audio or maps right there. So that's a really, really cool feature. Another really nice feature of this big screen is the camera system. So you can see we have a 360 view camera. It is not as good as BMW or Audi, but frankly, it would be silly to expect that, of course, from a more mainstream vehicle. So you can see you have a really, really nice uh, top view right there. And if I just drive a little, a few feet forward, you'll see that this is what your camera view looks like. You have that really nice front camera view that's nice and wide. And you can also see I have projection right here showing me where the car is going to go as I drive. So that is a really, really nice feature. And if I put the car in reverse, 
You'll see we just have a nice backup camera. It is pretty grainy, especially for this big screen, but it's still definitely usable. That 360 camera is extremely, extremely nice. And again, I really like that they give you the guidance even when you're there. If I put the car back in park and hit the camera again, you can see you can actually get a view through the car, which is just really, really cool. If you wanna see something maybe down low, maybe see a curb, that is a really cool feature. So overall, uh, I would say it's definitely worth getting this 12 inch screen. Uh, the, the camera features are incredible. And also just, it's really nice that you can have your vehicle functions up at the same time as your entertainment functions. The one downside of the big screen, all of your buttons get converted to touch sensitive buttons. Now they're pretty good, pretty receptive. Um, but still a lot of people don't like that. You know, if you get them with gloves, those aren't gonna work. So that is something to keep in mind. You do have this really quirky power button placement. So what, to turn the car on, it's located here, which is just a strange place for it, but not necessarily bad. Uh, you do have wireless charging standard on every Venza down in that little cubby. You also have your USB and aux there, nicely labeled. Parking brake is electronic. You do have an EV mode in this car, which is great. You can drive purely electric uh, for a short distance, which is very cool. Different drive modes, of course, those tend to not be super consequential. Shifter, there's really nothing to say about. Has a good tactile feel. I really like the metal accenting in it right there. Cup holders have the nice little grips, which keep your cup in place. And this is interesting, the heated and cooled seats. You can see them now, but if I slide this forward, I can actually hide them away and bring it right there. I think this is a really cool idea. I like the idea of hiding buttons. I just wish maybe they did for a function that wasn't one that I was gonna reach for so often. But that, again, this car is so good. Really just, that's a super nitpicky thing. So overall, really nicely designed center console area. And here, let's talk about your mirror. So you can see you have these, of course, your home link buttons down here if you wanted to uh, connect to your garage door, but this does have Toyota's camera mirror. So if I flip this switch right here, you'll see we have a nice clear view. There's nothing in the way. Uh, you don't have to worry if your back is blocked or whatever. This is a really, really great feature. I think GM started this and I'm really glad another company has caught on. Uh, I think this is gonna be a really big feature. That sounds like a gimmick, but honestly, one once you try it, it's really, really useful. Here in the back, my first thing that I noticed is that I feel like I have way more legroom back here than a vehicle this size typically would offer. I actually feel like I have plenty back here, especially with this seat moved really far back. This is really, really excellent. You're gonna be fitting two adults back here comfortably, not three. You have this really big hump in the middle, and when you put your, I can't even fit my foot um, down all the way straight between the back of the seat and the center console, or the front. So uh, that is something really important to note. You're not paying three adults back here. For a short trip, maybe, uh, but the one in the middle is going to be uncomfortable. Let's talk about amenities though. You do have uh, two nice air vents back here. Always love air vents in the back seat. You have two USB ports back here. Every Venzo is gonna get two USB ports back here regardless of the trim. So that is a really, really excellent thing to note. And you can pull on the center and you do have two cup holders right here, which is really nice. So in terms of amenities, the Venza does pretty good. You're definitely gonna have two happy adults back here, not three. Now I wanna discuss one of the Venza's key features and that would be the big panoramic roof you might have seen in other reviews or other people talk about. It has a big electrochromatic roof, which means it's a big glass pane and with the push of a button, it automatically dims itself. It's a really, really cool feature available on the limited Venza. However, this one here has the roof rails so it does not have that electrochromatic roof. You can't get that and the roof rails on the same vehicle. However, we will possibly take a look at another Venza maybe later in the year if you all want or next year and then we'll try to get one with the glass roof. Let's talk about some of the storage space found in this vehicle. So I wanna show you your center cubby first. If we open this up, you'll see you have these two things that look suspiciously like shallow cup holders, but are marked that they are specifically not so. You can pull those out and you have a decently deep area right there. Let's close that up. Then you can see you have this nice glove box right here. Uh, it really just fits your manual, but you could maybe get a hat and some gloves in there. I wish they did something like this. I'm guessing they couldn't have because maybe there's an airbag there or something like that. You can see you do have some nice door storage cubbies. Let's close that up. Let's look in the back right here. You can see you have some nice door storage there. And of course, the middle pullouts that we mentioned earlier and map pockets. 
Coming in at just over $42,000, the Venza offers lots of features that rival that of even luxury automakers. Those very comfortable seats, that rear view camera in the mirror, that wonderful camera system all around, and the glass roof are all really, really cool features that are unusual in a vehicle at this price point. And standard features like the power tailgate are just really a cherry on top. So you should really consider this vehicle if you're looking for a family-sized crossover. It's really comfortable, great for four people. A huge thanks to you all for watching and a huge thanks to Coons Toyota of Westminster for letting us take a look at this Venza. If you uh, are looking for a new Toyota, be sure to check out their website in the description below. And if you like our videos, consider subscribing for weekly videos. We'll see you guys in next week's video.